So this video might look a little bit different. Um, reason being is because I am using a different camera that I found at the thrift store. Yeah, I got this little 4K camera um, for three bucks. And it was brand new and it came with a 64 gigabyte SD card. And um, it's kind of an off-brand. It's like, what is this thing called? Acaso, Acaso Brave 4 4K. So hopefully the video quality will be a little bit nicer than what my phone can do. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Taking another look at our power supply here, the thermal take. Um, 750 watt with the cool uh, <laughs> RGB built into it. Um, last time we took a look at this, we wanted to find some cables that uh, work in it. Um, we did a little probing around in it with a multimeter, and we determined that I really only had one cable that was completely compatible with it without um, doing anything goofy to it, you know, repinning and stuff like that. Um, so I hopped on to uh, Amazon and I found one of these. And what this tool will allow us to do is to repin um, the cabling. And I'll show you how to use it here in a second. It's really easy to do. So in order to repin the end of one of these, so what you do is you take your tool here um, and you look down the end of your connector and inside of here and it'll be more apparent um, what I'm talking about when we get it out of here um, there's two tabs on the inside on each side of um, each Molex pin there's a tab that holds it in inside of this uh, plastic housing here so this tool here will um, pinch those tabs together and allow you to pull it out so what we're gonna do Grab this, stick it inside, and you have to stick it all the way in. You got these, um, this little, uh, you know, where it necks down here, where it gets a little bit thinner. Stick it all the way in. It might require a little bit of wiggling back and forth, but eventually you'll pinch it to the point where that will come out of there. And and as you can see, hopefully, there's these little wings that stick out, those two little tabs. That's what locks this inside of there. So, pretty handy little tool. And then it makes um, all of your uh, miscellaneous modular cable, uh, power supply cables, compatible with uh, all major power supplies because you can change it over yourself. So now I got my power supply all set back up. Um, I got the green and the black wire jumpered um, to trick it to come on and then we're going to use the multimeter to map out our um, pins in here because now we're going to match our uh, cables, new cables, to um, our power supply. So we have to figure out what the uh, setup on the power supply is. So. So now I'm all set to um, start mapping these out. I have a um, notepad over here that I'm going to write them down so that I can keep track of what's going on. And now it's just a simple fact of we have to find, um, there should be a 12 volt, there should be a 5 volt, and there should be a 3.3 volt, and then a couple of grounds. So we'll map out which ones are the grounds and we'll match out, map out which ones are our voltages. So. That's probably our five volts because remember, it's gonna read high because we have no load on it. That's our 12 volt. And that's probably our 3.3 volt. I doubt it has two five volts. Um, we should probably put a load on this to get our numbers closer to what they should be. So last time we determined that this one here was safe, it was compatible with it. And we could use it to just sort of like run the wires back and be like, oh, this one's this volt, this one's this volt. But um, <clears throat> we're going to do this kind of the longer way for educational purposes. 
I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up to a fan that I have off camera and hopefully this will be enough draw to get our numbers closer to what they should be. Probably hear the fan off camera. So here we go. So 5.7, 13.0, 12.0, 4.1. So the voltages did drop a little bit and I'm pretty confident in saying that this is 3.3, this is 12, and this is 5. And then these up here we'll find out if they're ground or not by going to continuity. But uh, let me go ahead and write. We've got top left ground, the middle one's not used, uh, top right ground, and then 3.3, 12, and 5 volt. Now all we got to do is match up all of our miscellaneous um, wires to that. So we'll start on this one. Um, I'm going to do two, uh, well actually three, cables to this. Um, for my X58 uh, rig, I want to set up a, a Molex connector with like a floppy drive connector. Um, just in case I ever need that kind of a power um, source for it. And then I'm going to do a complete um, SATA one. And then I'm also going to have to do a power supply PCI Express um, cable to it. Because we need to power a graphics card. So having this tool is really friggin' handy, but you don't absolutely need it. Um, so if you look down, uh, down there where the pins are, um, you can just about fit a regular staple uh, bent to look like, you know, like a number seven or an L or whatever, um, down inside of each um, little channel there. It's an It'll hurt your thumbs or, you know, whatever you're pushing against it. And you'll go through a lot of staples, but you can release them um, like that. But it's really kind of a pain. So this little tool, um, I think it was like 12 bucks. Anyways, well worth the money spent. In my opinion. And um, sometimes this, the amount of um, wire, um, free wire they give you to, to pull this out isn't really enough. And I find that you have to separate your wire like this to give yourself, you know, good purchase on it. And then it's just a matter of wiggling it around and figuring out. So I'm going to unpin this entire um, connector. I just find it to be easier to do that way. Um, you know, the one of the grounds might be in the right place. and. Um, it's kind of hard to work around that, at least it is for me. You might, you might not think that, and you do just the ones you absolutely have to, but this is just easier for me. You don't have to do this. Come out of there. There we go. All four. So our two middles are going to be ground. Let's go ahead and put those in first. So according to our schematic up there, the top, this one here, and this one here, the two outside ones are grounds. And then, I don't know if it matters if you put these in, you know, upside down, you know, like, like this, or like that. I always, and I've only done this a few times, it's, it's, it's not um, something that comes up a lot, but um, I do it so that the... Um, I don't know, the open part, for lack of a better word, goes upwards toward your um, clasp. And there we go, two grounds. When looking at your Molex connector, the one on the left, so you get these little notches here, these little bevels. Uh, I'm sorry, the one on your left is your 5 volt. One on the right is your 12 volt. And if you mix these up, it's a, it's a lot of, it's a big problem. So don't, don't mix them up. Don't do it. So let's plug in our 5 volt. Let's plug in our 12 volt. 12 volt. There we go. That is repinned. So, so the best thing to do with this um, is make sure you did it right. Double check your work. And with nothing plugged into the ends of these, go ahead and 
send it in. Grab your multimeter, check your grounds, centers your grounds. This left one should be 5.5 volts. Sorry, 5 volts. Well, we're going to read high. And then the outer one on the right should be 12 volts. So now this is pinned correctly. Um, these little guys here, um, like your uh, uh, floppy drive and other weird connectors that really um, isn't used anymore in today's day and age, this is the same setup. It, it goes exactly the same. The two middle should be ground. You'll have a 12 volt and a five volt on the outsides. So we can leave that be. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with my SATA connectors. It's the same exact process, only it's going to have a 3.3 volt in there, one extra wire. I'll see you back when it's done. Okay, so I finished uh, repinning the SATA connector. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is make sure we've done it right. And plug it in there. We're looking for 3.3 ground, 5 volts, ground, 12 volts. 12, or 3 volts, ground, 5 volts, ground, 12 volts. All right, awesome. All right, looking at my PCI Express cable here. I'm noticing that there is a solid um, plastic between these two pins right here, here and here. Um, no big deal. That can be cut out with a razor blade. Um, I don't know where this came from. Sometimes when I buy uh, secondhand cases, um, it'll actually have you know just stuff in it. You know, people will stuff things in there, and sometimes I'll find stuff like this in there. So. This is definitely to something um, they didn't want you plugging into somebody else's power supply. But again, we're going to repin it. And then um, as long as these um, uh, the connector physically fits in there, it should be fine. Um, easy way to figure that out is, of course, look at some of them are square and some of them are shaped like a D. Make sure. Um, if it's not shaped the right way, it just physically won't fit. So that'll be the end of that. But um, this one should fit. So here's going to be our little solution to the plastic. Take a knife. Um, and this one's not the sharpest thing in the world, but you don't have to worry about that. So we're going to cut. And so there we go. I've cut a channel. And it should fit. It should fit. does fit it's a little tight um, I'm gonna as you can see the channel I cut is not exactly the same thickness as the other ones so I'm gonna see if I can't fix that real quick there we are I widened up that gap and then looking at these two um, pinouts these cable pinouts um, the D's versus the squares don't line up exactly but a D will fit into a square and I'm sure there's an actual name for this, but I just call it a D. Um, the D will fit into a square space, but a square won't fit into a D space. So as long as there's no square trying to fit into a D space, this should plug right in. There we go. So PCI Express is a little different than your peripheral plug-in, like SATA and Molex and stuff, on account of you're going to have um, five ground pins and three 12 volt pins. You're not gonna have five volt or 3.3 volts. So what we are gonna have is um, somewhere on here. Um, well, I mean, I've already tested it. Um, the whole bottom row is ground. And then this top one up here on top right is also ground. Then you have 12 volt, 12 volt, 12 volt. So that's not all entirely true. Two of those ground pins are going to be a sense wire. It'll tell the power supply whether or not it should have six and a quarter amps versus 12 and a half amps. Um, it's all 12 volts, but the amperage is gonna be the difference. And mainly that's six, um, six pin versus eight pin configuration. So all we gotta do is make sure that we match 
that. Oh, this whole row here should be ground. And then this should be 12 volt, 12 volt, 12 volt. So, wait, did I flip this around? I did. 12 volt, 12 volt, 12 volt. So this is actually compatible, which is nice. So this power supply should be ready to go. Should be compatible with all the cables I have now, which is nice. I didn't have to order anything. Well, save for that, had to order the tool. But um, yeah, now we should be good to go. So, uh, like my last video, I hope my ramblings and everything is straightforward and understandable. I will edit this to the best of my ability so that um, you guys can understand it. And, um, yeah, um, that, that's it for repinning uh, power supply. It's a pretty simple thing to do. Um, this little tool here is a godsend, so go ahead and get yourself one of those if you need to do it. And that way you will never have to worry about trying to research online and find out if you can buy um, lost cables for these. Because it can be a pain, even especially on the older ones. You go to the like Thermal Takes website, they don't really say anything about ordering new cables. And if you you know contact customer support, kind of get the runaround, it's really kind of a pain. So being able to repin these is really a time saver and it's great. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up and if uh, you want to subscribe that would be awesome I do this kind of stuff almost on a weekly basis and um, I hope you enjoyed it so uh, I will see you in the next one where um, I do more stuff <laughs> goodbye for now